Lisa Kearney. This is FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win. We have been waiting 207 days to kick off this new NFL season. And here, we're doing the dang thing. Hyped for week one. And know you are too. We're breaking down every game this weekend, including the big Monday night matchup in Seattle. Plus, revealing our experts' best bets, value futures picks, and who you must have on your DFS roster right now. It's week one. Let's roll. Yes, it is game time, boys. You all know the team here holding it down in our Los Angeles studio with me, our sports betting expert. Dave Give me some of that. Right? Let's do this. Our uh, sports radio host, Andrew Filipponi there in Pittsburgh. And then, of course, our NFL expert, our analyst, Cole Wright, joining us on the bird from Chicago. It's week one, guys. Let's do this. And as usual, lots to get to in this hour. So let's get your minds right before we get to our experts. Got to make sure that you're prepped to place your bets. Now is the time to download the FanDuel Sportsbook app so you can make any bet right from your phone. And as a special thank you, FanDuel has a special offer for week one of the NFL season. You're going to get $150 in free bets when you place your first $5 wager. So new users, sign up, deposit at least $10 in your account, place your first $5 bet to get that $150 in free bets. Deposit, wager, win. It is truly easy as that. All right, guys, let's kick this thing off with a huge NFC matchup here. Tom Brady back for his 23rd season, leading the Bucs into Dallas to take on those Cowboys. This is your Sunday night viewing pleasure, guys. The line for this one has moved over the past week from the Bucs giving one and a half, Dave, to now giving two and a half. Mm. Dave, who are you backing here in Dallas? Uh, I'm not back in a 45-year-old man that's going to have rust coming off of a retirement. I think that Tom Brady is going to throw a couple of interceptions like he did last year in week number one. This is the identical matchup that we had last season in week one where the Bucks were at home and were a nine-and-a-half point favorite and won on a last-second field goal. Brady got picked twice. Look, the Cowboys are going to be able to flip the, the uh, script on that score last year and I think win this game. Brady's been a different quarterback away from his home field for a few years now, Dave, and that was emblematic in the against the spread road record of the Bucks last year. They were just three and six when they left the friendly camp confines of the big sombrero there with the pirate ship in the background. Brady also playing without Rob Gronkowski. His security plank blanket is gone. And his offensive line is a unit that was decimated by injury in the preseason. So I'm going to take the Cowboys with the points. And I'm even going to take them on the money line to win this game outright, Lisa. You are not alone. I'm hearing a lot of people that are swinging that way. All right, guys. Let's get uh, the right take now with Cole Wright. Cole, Tom Brady flat out does come to play in week one. I mentioned this last week. He's 14-3 and outright in his last 17 season openers. Does that trend continue? Yeah. Well, I'm not a big fan of the way that Dave and Pony are disrespecting Tom Brady. Just because he's 45 years old, uh, he's not your regular man at 45, no doubt about that. But we one thing we do know is that Cowboys fans, uh, they are a romantic and passionate group. I mean, uh, let's get things straight. They haven't played in the Super Bowl since 1995 when Cross Colors and Zeke Avaricis were all the rage. Now, Tom Brady, he's played in the last six Super Bowls, and he's won three of those last six that he's been in, and he's gotten after it for the last six he's been in. So when you take a look at Tom Brady and all the things that he's been going through, and Cowboys, I know you're feeling good about this 2022 campaign, but I think that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are gonna make easy work of these boys. A 34 to 20, to throw all the numbers out the window. Ooh, doing the thing on the road. Okay, Cole. Uh, there are a ton of fun prop bets available for this game, and one of the most popular is first touchdown score. Check out the plus money here on the screen. You guys know how much I love that plus money. I want to get your pick and hear your reason why. Dave. You know, on these first touchdown scoring bets, in most games, the running backs are always going to be the favorite. But last year when these two teams played, all seven touchdowns were passing touchdowns. So I'm looking for value from a wide receiver. Chris Godwin, who missed the last three uh, games of the regular season and the postseason, finally practiced without a brace earlier in the week. I think he's hungry to get that first touchdown, and I think Brady's going to get it to him. Friend of the show, by Wait, the way, how much Brady. 
Yeah, we know how much Brady has loved uh, Mike Evans in these situations, but the value just isn't there. So I'm going to take Julio Jones. Welcome to Tampa off a bad year in Tennessee. Brady, a big red zone target with all those tight ends he lost. I'm going to take a flyer on 12 to 1. Okay, well, Chris Godwin, we know how good he was last year when it came to racking up yards. But, uh, you know, I think the value really is with Mike Evans because he was the only guy on the Bucks last year with double-digit touchdowns. And uh, I think that he and Tom are going to tap into that uh, familiarity that they currently have, make it 7-0 nice and early. I'm going Mike Evans plus 700. That sounds like some pretty serious dough. Uh, writing that philosophy as well as I just drafted him last night for my fantasy team. I know no one cares about my fantasy team. So let's get to the Chiefs at Cardinals, guys. This game features two of the best young quarterbacks, but both Patrick Mahomes and Kyler Murray now without their top targets. You guys know this. The Chiefs traded Tyreek Hill to the Dolphins in the offseason. Cardinals wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins, he is suspended for PEDs for the first six games. Dave and Pony getting you guys back in here. Kansas City was a three and a half point road favorite last week. That number is now five and a half. Pony, what do you make of this line? Well, I am a little bit uh, concerned about the line movement, that it's been such a rush to make Kansas City a bigger favorite. But this is what will give me peace of mind, Dave. Underdogs in week one. Last year, 12 covered. It was an NFL record. It seems to me like there's such a lack of information because so few teams are playing their starters now in the preseason that a lot of these underdogs are undervalued <clears throat> in week one. And I think that's happening in this game with the Cardinals at home. A home dog for a playoff team last year? Give me the Cardinals. Yeah, I'm with you. You know, this is just a, a weird matchup to begin with. The Cardinals and the Chiefs really only score off once every four years. And the, the Chiefs typically don't face an NFC opponent in week number one. It's only happened twice in the last 24 years, and they, they didn't cover in either of those spots. But they haven't covered in Arizona the last three times there. To me, this is a disrespect to a team that I think is very underrated this year. Yes, they don't have DeAndre Hopkins, but they still have Kyler Murray. He just got paid, and I'm betting them, and I'm going to get paid. <laughs> Cole, are you going to get paid? Uh, you heard the guys picked. Which team do you have winning and by how many points? Yeah, I will get paid, but it will be in a whole different way than our other two guys. Because uh, when you hear Patrick Mahomes speak, he says that it could be anybody this season when it comes to that wide receiver position. And uh, it's going to be uh, on display two elite Texas high school quarterbacks. And you know, at the end of the day, when you look at Kyler Murray, he was able to put the better body of work. However, that new contract and those five and a half points, I don't think it's going to really even matter in this one. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, he's going to spread things around. He's going to make good use of every single option at his disposal. 28 to 20. I see Kansas City getting the W here. All right, let's move on here to any time touchdown score, guys. You, you see the, the odds here on your screen. Dave, you're going to start us off with a value pick for this bet. Are you going Are you going rogue a little bit? What do you think? Not, not too crazy. It's plus money. But Kyler Murray, you know, early in the season when he is healthy and he is fresh, he loves to scramble and he loves to smell the end zone with his legs. He scored a rushing touchdown in the first three weeks of the season, two seasons in a row. So I think you can count on him to have those fresh legs and get in the end zone and score. I'm going to take this new fad we have in the NFL, which is reuniting college quarterback with receiver. It was so successful with Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase last year. Copycat league, Hollywood Brown, Kyler Murray, Oklahoma teammates. They already have the chemistry, and I think they connect in this game. Well, you know, we're going to talk about Derek Carr and Devontae Adams in just a little bit. But in the meantime, the anytime touchdown score in this one, it, this is a Kyler Murray no disrespect zone because, like Dave pointed out, the man has a knack for sniffing out that end zone. And over the last two seasons, 16 rushing touchdowns. So uh, I think I plus 195, Kyler O. Murray. His middle name pretty much says it all. Cash that ticket. All right, guys, there are also dozens of season-long player prop bets available on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. But these bets are only available until the early games kick off on Sunday. So make sure you check out what's available right now. And we're taking you to that market right now and focusing on some quarterback props. And, Dave, you know I'm coming right back to you. Let's start with Patrick Mahomes. Will the Chiefs quarterback go over or under 4,500 and a half regular season passing yards? What do you think? So that's a number that he's only missed once. 
and I think it's going to hit it. A lot of people think he might not because Tyreek Hill is gone and he's gone to Miami, but he still has his number one target in, in Travis Kelsey. And they've got, you know, I, I think enough help. Uh, they lost three receivers. They brought in two. They, they drafted one in the second round in Sky Moore. I think they'll be okay. I think Mahomes, last year, remember, he went through that slump where he only had one 300-yard game in a six-game span, and he still ended up with 4,800, and he had a down year, 4,800 to me. I think he hits it pretty easily. All right, uh, my fantasy quarterback, by the way. I, I thought you asked me that. Good Sorry. pick. Uh, hey, Pony, you get Aaron Rodgers. Over or under 30 and a half regular season passing touchdowns for the back-to-back -back MVP. What do you think? I think the over is a sucker bet. I think people instantly look at this and say, oh, my goodness, the back-to-back -back MVP can't throw more than 30 touchdowns in 17 games. Do the math. I mean, if he averages two passing touchdowns a game, he goes over. But I don't think he will. I see a changing of the guard in Green Bay offensively. They don't have the receivers. I don't believe in Alan Lazard as a number one. And I think they're going to play turnover free football and run the ball, Lisa, in the red zone with Dylan and Jones. I'm going under. Going under. Okay, Cole, this is a quarterback prop for you, but yep. it is a rushing one. Over or under 900 and a half rushing yards for Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson, who, by the way, has given this week as a deadline to get that contract done. Bro, he saw everyone else out there getting paid, especially that Russell Wilson money. So, you know, he wants to punch a few tickets. But Lisa, he's your backup quarterback on your fantasy team, right? But e either way, 900 and a half yards. You asked me the same thing last year. And uh, we know that last season and the last four games, you missed that in the playoffs because of that injury bug. So when it comes to Lamar Jackson, you go back two seasons prior to 1,000 yards plus, 1,000 yards plus. So this looks to be easier than breathing right here. I'm going to go Lamar Jackson. He's going to be a huge piece to that running game to complement that tandem out of the backfield. Go over. No doubt about it. Stay healthy. Go over. All right, wrapping up this with a reminder for all of you. Season-long player props, again, are only available until early, game, early games kick off on Sunday. So make sure to take advantage of these odds right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And while you're making money on your bets, you can also win part of a $10,000 prize pool just by answering a few questions about the games this week. Now, GMC is teaming up with FanDuel for a free-to-play GMC Sierra Mountain Climber Pick'em Contest. All you got to do is log on to FanDuel.com slash free slash contest slash GMC Mountain Climber before the week one early games kick off on Sunday. You got to get to it. Answer a few questions about the NFL matchup for that week. The more answers you get right, the higher you move up that mountain. Fans who get every answer right will reach the summit and, of course, win a share of that $10,000 prize pool paid in site credit. Guys, it's free, so make sure you log on right now to FanDuel.com slash free slash contest slash GMC Mountain Climber to enter the free GMC Sierra Mountain Climber Pick'em Contest. It's going on right now. Now, if you don't win this week, it's all good. You can enter every week of the NFL season to win a share of that $10,000 prize pool. Have fun, enjoy the games, and good luck. And oh, it feels so good to kick off this season, right? FanDuel TV is taking you along for the ride, and we are just getting started here on More Ways to Win. Coming up, our betting experts reveal their best week one spread bet, and we're dipping in on daily fantasy. Our DFS expert is hooking you up with his three best value plays for week one. Stick around. We're coming right back. Yes, this is FanDuel TV, and yes, you're in the right place. You're watching more ways to win, and it is time to get our betting experts' best spread bets for week one with a little, little twist and a, a lot of trash talk. <laughs> We call this segment Bet Mojis, and here's how it works. I'm going to ask each one of you guys for your best week one spread bet. You give us your pick, make your best case of why you're backing a certain team. The other two guys will react to your pick with an appropriate emoji. So, yes, the pressure is on to impress. And, Dave, you're up first. Give me your best week one spread bet. My best bet is the Pittsburgh Steelers to cover against the Cincinnati Bengals, who have no business being favored by this much against the Steelers, who essentially have owned them uh, – uh, over the years and yeah so the Bengals make the Super Bowl last year and the Steelers come back and they don't have Ben Roethlisberger for the first time in two decades but doing a little bit of research Mike Tomlin as an underdog with quarterbacks other than Ben Roethlisberger is awesome with guys like Mason Rudolph Dennis Dixon Duck Hodges Michael Vick Byron Leftwich, Charlie Batch 13 3 and 2 against the spread that's 81 percent 
So give me a pro bowler in Mitchell Trubisky. I'm covering. All right, Dave likes the Steelers getting the points. Well, give me that poop. Come on, Cole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, double poop. I mean, you, no, not double bringing poop. Up, you, you're you're yep. bringing up Chaz Batch. I mean, you can't go back and bring up Charlie Batch. Uh, you look I'm at saying. what the Cincinnati Bengals have been able to do over the last quartet of ball games versus those uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, come on, Dave. You're better than that. Doesn't that that's matter. why I have this right here. You're better. Dave, what's Tomlin's record against the spread when he faces Joe Burrow? Do you have that stat handy? I can find it for you. I'm, I'm sure it's pretty good. They were just as an to... underdog pony. It's probably never happened. When's he ever been a dog against Joe Burrow? They just wanted to come once. out hot. Last with year the they got blown yeah, out once. We get it. Uh, hey, pony, you're up. What's your best spread bet for Week One? Well, you know, everybody gets infatuated with the HBO Hard Knock series. And so the Lions are overvalued here because, oh, they've got this grit. They've got this will to win. They're so competitive. They play hard. I prefer talent. And the Eagles added that in the offseason with the A.J. Brown <laughs> trade to go along with the best rushing team in the NFL. No one was better at it than the Eagles. That's because of Jalen Hurts and his dual threat ability and the best offensive line in the league. This line is too low. Last year, it was a five-touchdown game. The Eagles blew them out, and I think they'll do it again. Deja vu, Dave. Fired up, guys. Okay. I like that. Ooh! Thank you. Yeah, that. Double money. <laughs> that is a, like that that is a big pony win right there. That's a first. Yeah, yeah. That's a first. Cole, That's you're some up. more ways to win record. Uh, Double Cole, money. Cole, get that money. Uh, what's your best spread bet for week one? Okay, well, you know, let's be real because uh, the Jets, when it comes to them uh, losing ball games, they lost 12 of 17 by seven or more last season. And Lamar Jackson, we know he's trying to get paid because everyone else saw the Brinks truck backed up to their house. So he's going to be out there playing for every single penny. The Jets quarterback play, no doubt about it. There's no way around it. Even if everybody was at full strength, 100% health, and they'd still have abysmal QB play. And you just take a look at Baltimore and the, and the matchup game. Uh, they also have the 11th easiest schedule. So I think they're going to get things started on the right foot. It, this is easy money right here. Baltimore over the Jets. You, you can punch tickets and uh, feel good. Take all your friends out to dinner if you don't mind. <laughs> Guys, Ravens giving the points. Cash. Ah, stay, stay smart. Okay, pony, pony, explain yourself. Well, I just don't see how the Jackson contract thing is a positive. I think it I think it casts a kind of a dark cloud on things for him. How does he handle it? Does he play hyper aggressive and put his body on the line when he doesn't have guaranteed money? Does he want to play in the pocket more and pass it because he thinks that's his ticket to get big money? I don't know. I just think it's so strange that he doesn't have his contract done. And I I would just be worried how that affects this game. That's all. All right. Maybe he's a baseball fan and he talked to Aaron Judge. Who knows? He's got fifty-five and counting. All right, you guys, uh, we'll have more on that game coming up. Go ahead and tell our guys or make your own bets. Right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app and new users, remember, take advantage of this special week one offer right now. Deposit at least $10 into your account. Make a bet of at least $5. You're going to get $150 in free bets because we love you, America. It's true. That's uh, why we're here. All right. Rolling on here on more ways to win now. Let's take a look at some more season-long player props that are on the board now at the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And, of course, at a FanDuel Sportsbook near you as well. We hit quarterbacks earlier in the show. We're now going to focus on the pass catchers. And, Dave, this is you. Tyreek Hill is now in yeah. Miami catching passes from Tua. We know that. His regular season receiving yards total 1,000 and a half. That's low. I mean, here's a guy, 1,200. It was almost guaranteed every single year, sometimes closer to 1,500. The only year he didn't hit this was when he was out for four weeks with that uh, collarbone, and he still got 860 yards. So is it because he doesn't have Patrick Mahomes? I did a little bit of research with Alex Smith the year before Mahomes came. He had 1,200 yards. And the season that Mahomes went down and Matt Moore came in, he got a 57-yard touchdown that same game in the second half. And the next two games with Matt Moore, he averaged 108 yards. So. The bottom line is he's freakishly fast. Mm -hmm. He catches bombs. Um, two is going to have to get it down the field, but that is a low number for a guy that hits it every single time. Even with Tua, I say he gets it. Yeah, and Tyreek has propped up his ego as well, saying he's a pretty darn good quarterback, maybe one of the best I've played with. Uh, all right, Pony, Devontae Adams has reunited with his longtime buddy and college quarterback, Derek Carr in Vegas. We alluded to this earlier in the show. Will his regular season receptions be north or south of 99 and a half? 
Oh, I easily love the over here. Uh, Derek Carr, if you look at him the last couple of years, when he has a receiver that he likes, he goes to that guy and he forgets about everybody else. For example, last year, Lisa, everybody loved Darren Waller going into the year. Mm -hmm. And then Carr became fixated on Renfro, whose numbers went way up over 100 catchers, catches, and Waller only had 50. So I think that's going to happen again. People are concerned about the other two passing uh, targets. I think it's going to be all Adams. They traded for him for, uh, to get him for a reason. I think it shows up big this year. Adams said the second that they lost, he got a call from Carr. And he knew the second he saw his number on his phone, he knew, he knew, knew what that phone call was about. I'm coming. All right, Cole, Jamar Chase enters season two with a regular season touchdown total of 10 and a half. Over or under that number, 10 and a half? Well, Lisa, just take a look at what he's done so far. Just one season in the league, and he already has 13 house calls to his credit. And remember, too, his sophomore year in Baton Rouge, what he and Joe Burr were able to do, we're talking about quarterbacks and wide receivers that play together in college and now in the NFL. Yeah, 20 touchdowns and route to that national championship. So uh, 10 and a half touchdowns for Jamar Chase. Yeah, he's going to have that, but he's going to have it week 13. Hope you feel good about that one. All right, feel good. All right, thank you, Cole. See you in a sec. So should you pick up any of those wideouts for your daily fantasy team here in week one, head to Fandle.com to check out a bunch of DFS contests right now where you can win thousands of dollars just by starting the right players. And, of course, the key is getting value at each, at each position. So Jim Sonis is here, senior writer and analyst for Number Fire. He's got his best value plays for week one. What's up, Jim? Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, it is a delight to be back here talking with you once again about NFL DFS values this time for week number one. Let's start things off here. So uh, we lost Jim. We're going to get Jim back in just a moment. We want you to get those value plays. I thank Jim for doing that. Set your lineups now at FanDuel.com. Follow Jim on Twitter at Jim Sonis. Check out his Covering the Spread podcast as well, wherever you get your podcasts. And Jim will be back with us later in the show to reveal his week one DFS studs as well. Thank you, Jim. We're going to get you back. All right. Still more to come here on More Ways to Win. There are some huge division games this week. We're going to tell you which side to bet and more importantly, why? Plus, the regular season MVP goes to, well, got to stick around to find out our experts' best value bet on the board right now. This is FanDuel TV, and we're coming right back. Yes, we are. We're doing the dang thing. Welcome back in. This is FanDuel TV. We're going to get you right in back into our game previews and take a look at some week one division matchups starting with an NFC North battle here. You see it playing out. Aaron Rodgers Packers are in Minnesota to kick off this season. Rodgers has a new receiving core and he called them out. And the Vikings have a new head coach in Kevin O'Connell here. Guys, the Packers are one and a half point road favorites. Dave, you're up. How you betting it? You know, I know one of Pony's pet peeves is I always talk offense and I never talk about defense. But for the Minnesota Vikings, the return of Daniil Hunter, 2018, 14 and a half sacks. 2019, 14 and a half sacks. Didn't play 2020, only played seven games last year. Pro Football Doc, Pony says that he is back and going to be very healthy and back to his old ways. So big number 99, it makes a big difference. And Lisa pointed out, Kevin O'Connell coming in to the Vikings, bringing that high-flying offense that he had in Los Angeles. Stafford and Cup is now Cousins and Jefferson. Watch these two guys have career years. I think Minnesota goes a long way, and it starts by beating their rivals, the Packers, here in week one. Aaron Rodgers, the last few years, is 3-0 and without Devontae Adams. Uh, he was an MVP before him. He was a Super Bowl winner before Adams showed up. So I don't like the narrative that Adams really made Rodgers or turned him into an MP MVP. That's hogwash. I think we see that in this game. Another one of my favorite trends to bet on week one is fading rookie head coaches, guys that are calling game management decisions for the first time in big situations. And I think that helps Green Bay. LaFleur, LaFleur's record is almost impeccable against the NFC North. And with this small line, I think Green Bay covers. 
All right, guys, let's move quickly to the AFC West. Your Raiders are at the Chargers. We talked about Devontae Adams earlier in the show. Big things expected for him as Vegas looks to get back to football, right? With new head coach Josh McDaniels. Now, as for the Chargers, Justin Herbert getting a lot of MVP chatter after finishing top three in yards and touchdowns last season. I, for one, Dave and Cole are very excited to get to see Herbert now back in action. Chargers are three and a half point home favorites, Dave. What do you like here? This is a very surprising line to me. When I made my lines, I thought the Chargers would be the biggest favorite of the week against the Raiders. I mean, I know Cole likes the Raiders a lot more than I do this year, but I think the Chargers are a touchdown better. I thought this line would be right about seven, and it's closer to a field goal. Look, the Raiders obviously have a, a lot of toys on offense that Josh McDaniels is going to be able to play with, but defensively, I don't see how they're going to be able to stop the Chargers offense. And from a you know, a penalty standpoint, the Raiders had more penalty yards than any other team in the league last year. They can't afford to make mistakes against this Chargers team. Cole, I think this line is way off. Well, defense, penalties, throw those out the window. It doesn't really matter because how can you not be all in on that uh, Las Vegas quartet? Adams, Renfro, Jacobs, Waller, yards from scrimmage a season ago, uh, just a shade under 4,500 and 31 combined touchdowns. So Derek Carr has to just look around and say, who do I want to go to the end zone with? A whole bunch of options. And uh, no disrespect, Dave, to you or Pony when it comes to the Bolts. I know you like them a lot. But uh, Brandon Staley, last time the, the two teams locked horns, he let the numbers get the better of them. So Raiders in a close shave here. They're going to score a bunch of points, but not so much week one. 23 to 20, they get the W. All right, now let's get to the AFC North here. The Steelers taking on the Bengals in Cincinnati. Pittsburgh announced this week Mitch Trubisky will be their week one starter after signing as a free agent this offseason. Kenny Pickett sits there as backup. Meanwhile, Bengals quarterback Joe Burrow has his boy Jamar Chase ready to roll after breaking the rookie record last year with 1,000 455 receiving yards. Guys, the Steelers getting six and a half on the road. Pony, you're the sports radio voice in Pittsburgh. I put, I mentioned Kenny Pickett because of you. I know how high you are on him, but you've got Mitch. What do you make of this line with that quarterback? I think they're throwing uh, Trubisky out there to be the sacrificial lamb in this game on the road against the AFC champs. Uh, the Bengals overhauled their offensive line. They've got four new starters. They needed it after Burrow got hit 50 times last year. The Steelers spend fewer dollars on the offensive line than any team in the league. I don't think that's a good formula when you've got a new quarterback in a new system on the road against the AFC champs. No way, no how. I'm taking the Bengals to win big. Well, I'm with you on this one, Pony, because it's apparent that the little brother has clearly grown up. Now, just three wins versus the Steelers in the 2010s. I'm taking a look at what they've been able to do over the last four, as I made mention earlier in the show, three and one versus Pittsburgh. And uh, we know what they did last season. They outscored them 65 to 20. And I think it's going to be uh, just a classic blueprint when it comes to what we've seen in the most recent years versus Cincinnati, Joe Burrow, uh, leaning on Jamar Chase, playing like they're back at LSU still. And Joe Mixon, he's going to destroy the Steelers just like he did a season ago, 255 yards from the rush. Bengals, I think they're going to roll in this one, 30 to 17. Uh, Pony, you and I on the same page. I like where your head's at. All right, guys, more game previews coming up. But right now, let's take a look at the odds for regular season MVP. The most prestigious award has gone to a quarterback for the past nine years. So you can see all the favorites right there uh, on your screen at that position, guys. I want each of you to give me your best value MVP pick. Tell me why this stud is taking it home, Dave. Uh, I'm all in on Justin Herbert this year, and I'm all in on the Chargers. I think he is going to have the most yards in the league with right around 5,300. And I think he's going to take his team to win the toughest division in football in the AFC West. So combine those two things, and he's if, that, if those two things happen, he's a slam dunk to win the MVP. Dave, I wish I could give you the money emoji sign because I do like that pick. I think he did a good job there describing it too. But I'm going to go with Joe Burrow. The, the odds are better at 12 to 1 instead of 9 to 1. He's got all those weapons, and they're still underrated. They're Super Bowl odds. They're middle of the pack. So he'll get the benefit of the doubt of carrying a team if they can win the AFC North and get back into the playoffs. So I really like that, an ascending player, Joe Burrow, in year three. 
Well, you know, I, I said earlier this was a uh, no disrespect zone for Kyler Murray. It's also a no Derek Carr disrespect zone because at plus 2,500, if Aaron Rodgers can win an MVP at 37 and Tom Brady can snag one at 40, why can't Derek Carr put up crazy numbers with the guys that we just talked about at 31 years old? DC, when it comes to numbers, it is a numbers game. He's going to put up a whole bunch of them. So I think uh, a Derek Carr, the king of the sleeveless hooded sweatshirt, he's going to bring home that honor, man. Great stuff by you guys. Coming up, we're making it rain. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. These guys have 100 virtual dollars to bet on mm -hmm. week one games. See where their money's going. Plus, it's one of the most popular preseason bets. Who will win the Super Bowl? Our betting experts reveal their best value plays and pick a season champ. We're coming right back. Welcome back to more ways to win here on FanDuel TV. He's Dave. I'm Lisa. You're the best for being with us today. We're shouting out some of our betting markets with rapid fire predictions. Giddy up, guys. You know the drill. I'm going to give you the line. You give me your pick in 15 seconds or less. Dave, you've got Baltimore at the Jets. Joe Flacco starting at quarterback for New York. Zach Wilson still recovering from that right knee injury. New York getting seven and a half. A lot given uh, that hook and being over a touchdown, but this is quarterback uh, total mismatch. Yeah, it looks like Zach Wilson will be back till probably week number four. Joe Flacco has not won a game in the NFL since 2019. Harbaugh's five and one against the spread in week one the last six years. Baltimore's going to come to play. They'll cover. Pony Colts start on the road in Houston. Indy a seven and a half point favorite. And this line has come down. Look, the Colts have had some nightmarish first games, including losing to Jacksonville a couple of years ago. And then the Jaguars lost the rest of their games. And plus, this is a new quarterback. I'm down on Houston for the year, but I think they can keep this within a touchdown. So I'm going to go Texans. That's a popular sentiment. Cole, you are in Chicago, where the Trey Lance era kicks off for the 49ers. The Bears are getting six and a half at home. Well, you know what? As much as I would love to roll with the Chicago Bears, I, I just don't really see this one coming to fruition. There's new turf added in. Bermuda grass in Chicago, it's looking to be a fast track, but I think it's going to really benefit San Francisco in this one. Niners, they come into town and they escape with the W, 21 to 14, Lisa. Dave, Giants in Tennessee taking on those Titans. New York getting five and a half. I think the Giants keep this one close, stack the box uh, against Henry. They you know, really don't have any receivers that are going to scare anybody. And the coaching changeup in New York, I think, is a good thing with Brian Dable and Mike Kaffee coming in. The guys that really molded Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes, Danny Dimes will benefit from that. I like the Giants. Pony, Phillies in Detroit, Eagles giving three and a half. You really like this line, yes? Yeah, I'm all over Philadelphia. I think they're a sleeper to win the NFC. I think it's all on Jalen Hurts, but this will not be a stiff test. You know, Detroit, they started the last team to win a game last year, uh, seven consecutive losses. They still have Jared Goff at quarterback. So Dan Campbell, he's entertaining on TV, but this game won't be. And the Monday night game, Broncos quarterback Russell Wilson returning to Seattle to take on his former team. Cole, Broncos are six and a half point favorites in this one. And Lisa, I give you 265 million reasons why the, the, the Denver Broncos should go out and win this one. And I'll take 20 million reasons away because Russell Wilson and all that bread. Yeah, you know he's going to go out there and want to get that win. And uh, well, the Broncos, they haven't had a 4,000 yard plus passer since 2014 and Peyton Manning not walking through that door. I think the Broncos, they really spoil the 12 because it was all about Russell Wilson up there in Seattle. 24-17, you can count it. That homecoming will be uh, something to watch for sure, the reception there uh, in oh, yeah. Seattle. All right, let's go from quick picks to a confidence competition here between Dave and Pony. Uh, Focus on just these week one games here. So let's go over the rules. Each of you have 100 virtual dollars. You have to use it to bet one spread, uh, one money line, one total. Minimum bet is $20, no $1 Bob nah. stuff. The bigger the bet, the more confident you are. And we'll keep track of this over the season to see how well you guys do. All right, you know how much I love accountability time. Time, Pony. Um, I'll get to you, Dave. You're going to start us off. Well, I already told you, my, my best bet is the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. So I'm going to put the most money on them. That is $60 of my $100 bankroll to say that Mike Tomlin knows how to cover as an underdog and get the job done with those six and a half points. They may lose the game, but I think they'll keep it close enough. So $60 on them. As far as my money line bet, I said it earlier that I thought that that Chargers line was way off. So I'm taking the Chargers. A lot of people use the money line bet to play an underdog. I'm going to use it to actually bet a favorite on the money line because I think it's just free money. 
And then my total, I'm going to take one of the lower numbers of the week, Saints versus the Falcons to go over the 42 and a half. James Winston put up five touchdowns in week one last year. He's going to air it out against a bad defense. So give me the over in that one. 20 bucks. Dave, I'll pick up where you left off. My $60 spread wager is on New Orleans to cover on the road against the Falcons. Now that we've got the green light for Michael Thomas and Elvin Kamara, the Saints offense has all the ingredients they need to score points in this game against one of the most putrid defenses in the NFL. So it's a smaller than a touchdown spread. Give me New Orleans. Next up, 20 bucks. I am taking an underdog, but a small one. Cleveland at Carolina. I'm not convinced Baker Mayfield in this game is going to get it done. I think there's going to be a lot of hero ball. I think he's going to be out for blood. And I think that's going to lead to sloppiness, uh, careless plays and turnovers. So Cleveland gets it done that way. And then lastly, the under in Tampa Bay and Dallas. This game last year was a shootout. 60 points got scored. That total is low for a reason. Both teams are having offensive line issues. I'm going to take the under. All right, some interesting strategies there. We're going to see which one is the best after week one, and we're going to keep this thing rolling all season long. we got to put a bet on the bets, I feel like. Right, Dave? Yeah. Right? I, I like to bet. At the very end, Pony will that. take everybody to dinner. We'll bring our spouses. It'll okay. be amazing. All right, uh, coming up, we've ripped through some of the biggest matchups here in week one, but... We have four games left on this slate. We're breaking down and betting them all. Plus, never too early to talk Super Bowl. Our guys are bringing you their value picks after this. It's week one. You're watching FanDuel TV. Back up the truck. We're here to give you more ways to win. Four games left for us to break down, so let's bet them, and we're doing it right now. Dave and Pony, uh, you guys are first. got New Orleans in Atlanta. The Saints are giving five and a half points. Dave, who do you like? Well, if you caught it earlier this week on FanDuel TV, Sean Payton talked with Kay Adams and up and Adams and said he thinks that the Saints are going to win the division. And if that's the case, they need to make a big statement here in this divisional matchup against the Falcons in week one. I think they do that. I think they win very handily. I'm going to say 38-13. Wow. Okay, Dave. Yeah, I'm going to take New Orleans, too. I'm just flabbergasted by that score. Uh, look. The Falcons, I think, they really want to play Desmond Ritter. And I believe that Mariota is just a stopgap there. Sooner rather than later, we see the Cincinnati quarterback. And I think you will hear chants for Ritter in this game because New Orleans is up big, like Dave said. All right, guys, Panthers have a new quarterback. He's facing his old team. The Fighting Baker Mayfields are a one-and-a-half-point home favorite with the Browns in town. Pony, it's a good one for you. Take it. Well, I just think the Browns are going to be able to run the ball in this game. Nick Chubb, they did not trade Kareem Hunt. So even though they've got Jacoby Brissett, who's 14 and 23 all time as the starting quarterback, I see them running the ball and playing mistake free football. No ego on offense, Dave, now that Baker Mayfield's playing for the other side in this one. Well, Nick, Nick Chubb's going to be a good pony, but when you take a look at that Cleveland defense, Garrett, Clowney, Ward, Delpit, Williams, so you're going to have fun with that. But the problem for Cleveland fans, is that Baker Mayfield, he will have fun because a healthy little sweet Christian McCaffrey, well, that's going to be all the combination they need. I think this is one is going to be a, a, a revenge dish, best served Carolina style, 21 to 20. Panthers go on and get the win. Uh, the fabulous Baker boy's feeling good about the W. All right, Cole, hang tight. Bringing Dave back in here. The Patriots are at the Dolphins. New England has lost four of five outright in Miami. Patriots are getting three and a half. Cole? Well, you know what? I, I can't really feel good about myself if I were to go out there and pick the Miami Dolphins over the New England Patriots in week one. Because when you take a look at week one, the Patriots, and never mind the fact that on the road, they're 12 and 11 in week one. So just take a look at the fact that Bill Belichick, 26 and 18 all time versus Miami. And uh, most of those 18 losses, they were meaningless. So I go New England Patriots in this one, 27-20, Lisa. You know, Bill Belichick has a, a winning record on the road against the spread against all teams in the NFL except seven. The Dolphins are one of them. Struggles for whatever reason, probably because they're a big favorite in most of those spots. And here they are finally an underdog by three and a half. But I think the Dolphins match up very well against this Patriots team. I'm going to say that they, they cover. Come on, Tua. <laughs> All right, Pony, hop back in here. We're going to Jacksonville at Washington. Jags getting two and a half. Dave, coming right back to you. Let's see, Carson Wentz, the last time that he played against Jacksonville, it was last year, week 18. The Colts just needed to win. They get in the playoffs. They're a 15-point favorite. 
and he throws for 185 yards. He's not very good against Jacksonville. And if anybody knows Carson Wentz, it's his former coach and Doug Peterson who's taken over the Jags. I think this is going to be a terrible spot for Wentz to make his Washington debut. I don't think he's going to win. I think Jacksonville pull off, pulls off the upset. This is my dark horse bowl. I think both of these teams actually find their way into the playoffs this year. And so wow. I'm going to take Washington. I know I'm going to take Washington at home. They've got the schedule to do it. Wentz was brutal at the end of the year, but his overall number is not that bad. A big upgrade over Heineke. I know you love Heineke, Dave. You're a big Heineke man. I'm going to take Washington to cover. Dave, he might need to ride his dark horse off into the wherever I by mean, himself. I mean, even to get one of those two teams to make the playoffs would be massive odds. But for right? both, that ice cold exact on those playoff teams, astronomical. But he's calling a shot. All right, well, we're pouring more gas on this fire. Super Bowl value picks coming up. Two of our experts actually agree. No way. Uh, see which team they're backing. That's coming up next right here on FanDuel TV. Welcome back in, everybody. You're watching FanDuel TV, and this is more ways to win. Hey, we lost uh, Jim Sonis, our DFS expert and senior expert and analyst and writer for Number Fire. He is going to... Uh, we, we didn't get to his top value plays earlier in the show, but Dave, we wanted to share okay. with our viewers his top three value plays. This is just for week one. Um, th this is the value. So you're yeah. not going crazy, but you're going to get what you need out of these but guys. I, what do you think about him? I his wanted list? to know who they were. I, I think Marcus Valdez Gantley, obviously, to have Patrick Mahomes throwing the football is a good thing. And Saquon Barkley, you know, just wasn't quite ready to make those cuts and make those moves that are so explosive last year. But I think he's all healed up this year. Could have a big year with the, uh, the new offense that the new coaches bring in. All right, I like the list. I like the list. But you know what? Now we can like dump that bucket of money, right? FanDuel offers a bunch of DFS contests where you can win thousands of dollars just by starting the right players. So right now, we're bringing you the ringers, well worth their high price tag. Jim Sonis is back with the goods here. Uh, who's on your can't miss list in week one, Jim? Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, as much as I enjoy talking values, the studs in week number one are awesome on FanDuel for this week. That starts at the top with Travis Kelsey, a tight end, $8,000 again, getting exposure to this Chiefs versus Cardinals game. And Kelsey, sure, the snap rate may be down this year, but with Tyree Kill gone, Kelsey's probably going to get as many targets as he can handle in this offense. Great salary at $8,000, exposure to a fun game. I want Travis Kelsey in week one. Number two is Justin Jefferson, $8,100 in a game that also has some potential shootout ability here. Jefferson moving into a more pass-centric offense under Kevin O'Connell. Jefferson last year in games with Adam Thielen had 40% of the Vikings deep targets and 28% in the red zone. Getting that here on a more pass-heavy offense, hard to say no to that. My top stud, though, for week one has to be Christian McCaffrey at $9,500. McCaffrey is healthy, and that's all that matters here because in the five games last year that McCaffrey played at least 40% of the snaps, he averaged 142 yards from scrimmage per game in that time. He had 47% of the red zone chances, and now gets potentially a better quarterback in Baker Mayfield. Also, a Mayfield revenge game on tap for this week. So McCaffrey, a lot of boxes checked there. He's a guy I want to shovel into my lineups as often as I possibly can. Those are three really fun names to kick things off in week number one, Lisa. So hopefully the stud section is good the rest of the year as it is for this week. I love it. I love it. And Jim will be back with us every single week here on More Ways to Win. My man, set your lineups now. FanDuel.com and follow Jim on Twitter at Jim Saunas. And another reminder to check out his daily Covering the Spread podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And now, what you've all been waiting for, it is time to bet the Super Bowl. And now is the time to get that value. The Bills, Bucks, Chiefs are the three favorites here. Dave, you going chalk? You like a value play? What do you think? It seems like my team is getting a little bit chalkier. Uh uh, day by day, a lot of people are jumping on the, the Chargers. Like myself, I think that Justin Herbert is going to lead them all the way. It was the Rams who uh, represented SoFi last year. I think the Chargers are the best team this year that are playing in SoFi Stadium. And I think they'll beat the Vikings in the Super Bowl. Give me the Chargers over the Vikings. I picked the Chargers to win it last year. The AFC to get to the Super Bowl, I was wrong. But I'm not backing off either, Dave. I love them. Uh, they check every box for me. Uh, great quarterback, weapons, offensive line will be improved. They've invested there. Defense has Mack and Jackson now to go with Derwin James. 
and they play a third place schedule, which is key. The Chiefs first eight games are against teams that all went 500 or better last year. That's going to help the Chargers get a home field throughout the playoffs. Well, I, I'm going to need you guys to stop with all this Los Angeles Chargers talk because you're going way over the top here. And, and Dave, Minnesota versus yeah. the Chargers in the Super Bowl? C come on, what are we doing here? Let's just go how it needs to be said. Tampa Bay taking on those Las Vegas Raiders in Las Vegas, uh, looking to obviously roll out the red carpet with Josh McDaniels, Devontae Adams, and Derek Carr looking to be on the same page. It's same attitude in Vegas says they made the move from Oakland a year ago, just win, baby. But can the defense keep pace? That's going to be the biggest question. But will it really matter? We know that Oakland, all they're going to do, excuse me, Las Vegas, all they're going to do is absolutely boat race teams. So they haven't won the division or the conference in 20 years. This is what we call a renaissance in the desert. I'm going with the Raiders. That's tons of plus money. I know, Cole, you were thinking what I was thinking. West Coast, best coast, all this West Coast love. Look at that. Uh, bold picks by our guys. Now is the time to get great odds on your Super Bowl bets. Tail our guys, or hey, make your own picks. You can do it right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And as we know, because it's a huge celebration today, football is back and FanDuel is celebrating by giving a, you a huge giveaway. You can enter to win a football jersey of your choice. All you have to do to find out how is follow FanDuel Sportsbook or FanDuel Casino on Twitter or Instagram. Instagram. Giveaways happen right now until Tuesday, so make sure you follow FanDuel Sportsbook or FanDuel Casino for your chance to win. And that is how it is done. What a show, guys. We hit spreads, futures, player props to get you ready for week one, and it is finally here. Check out all the bets we talked about and more right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app, and it gets better because we're coming back here every week, 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific. FanDuel TV bringing you the best content in the business. Speaking of, keep it right here. Up in Adams with Kay and special guests coming in hot next.